Well, hey there, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode of Lutherville. Now, today, the day that I'm recording this video, is March 19th in the year 2016. It is almost two years exactly since the very first time that I came out here to Lutherville. So, probably wondering, well, what has happened? Pray tell in those two years. Well, good sir, I shall tell you. So, yes, Lutherville is still moving forward, even though it's been two years and nothing is built out here yet. But going into this, I knew that this was going to be very time consuming. It was going to be one of the most difficult projects that I've probably ever done in my life. And so I'd never really even set a deadline of like, this is when I'm going to be done. No, it's just like, let's keep moving forward and just kind of see what happens. So we're still moving ahead. We, well, I'm not schizophrenic. It's just me. I'm, <laughs> there's nobody else here. It's just me. I'm moving ahead with this project. It's taken a while. So let me kind of summarize what has happened in the last two years. So March, I come out here for the first time end up buying the property. Okay, then in the summer of 2014, around July, finally got another job, thank God. So gainfully employed <laughs> as of July in 2014. So after that, well, there really wasn't a whole lot for me to do because I needed to simply remain employed so that I could get a loan and build the house and all that sort of thing. So for about the next year, I didn't really do anything with Lutherville and with the project because I couldn't do anything. So um, last summer in August of 2015, that was when I finally bought my truck because I decided that I'm going to go the tiny house route. So I wanted to get a truck and be able to tow a trailer and a tiny house behind it. Okay. Problem was, uh, <laughs> the truck that I bought is so big that I have to have a commercial driver's license in order to tow the house. I thought, well, that's no, yeah, no problem, right? I have a motorcycle license. I have a hang glider pilot's license. You know, I've ridden horses. I'm a skateboarder. Like, how hard can it be to learn how to drive a truck, right? Hey, hey anybody can do it. What, are you kidding me? It's freaking easy. You just get in the truck and you shift some gears. You back it up to a dock and you're done, right? No. It's like way harder than that. It took me six months. I know it's embarrassing, isn't it? Like I thought, oh, I'll get this done in like 30 days. <sighs> no, it took me six months to pull it off and actually get my CDL. So August of 2015 to February of 2016, I was working on that. Now it is March. So March of 2016, my next step is to actually build the tiny house. Da, 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 da. So <clears throat> who am I going to go with? Well, I've been kind of talking to a number of different builders. Uh, I have to say, unfortunately, a lot of tiny house builders, very unprofessional people, very unprofessional. I do not like them at all. I've contacted so many tiny house builders that just simply weren't interested in my project. They just didn't want to do it, right? They, it freaked them out because I got some creative ideas that were just kind of beyond the scope of what they were willing to attempt. Not only that, but a huge majority of them would take forever to get back to me. I'm talking like three weeks. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? You're running a business, you have a potential client, you don't wait three weeks to respond to people. And I've encountered that across the board from like about a dozen different tiny house builders. So really kind of, kind of awful. There are, however, two exceptions. Tumbleweed, which is the very first tiny house company ever. They've been awesome. I've contacted them a few times. They've always been incredibly responsive and gotten back to me right away. So I really like Tumbleweed. And Tumbleweed strikes me as being one of the best quality houses out there. Now, I know it's, it's difficult to judge quality when you're only looking at pictures and videos on the internet, but nevertheless, I don't know. It just looks to me like what they're creating is a little bit more solid than what a lot of other people are doing. This right here is the website 
for tumbleweed, and it's how most people end up being introduced to tiny houses, because this is the site that always comes up first whenever you do a search on the internet. And here are some other images of tumbleweed houses, and as you can see, they're just fantastic. I mean, they look so cool, and the interiors and the exteriors are very professional, well put together, and they're just gorgeous and as they should be since these are the folks who started doing this first they definitely have more experience than anybody else out there the builder that i've been thinking about going with though the one i've been talking to quite often and who's been very professional and gets back to me right away and he's really eager and he's very interested in doing things that are creative is Stu at maximus extreme tiny houses now it's, I know that's not a great company name. I know, Stu, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry I got, I'm calling you out on your name, but like that's also the name of a graphics board for computers. So if you look up Maximus Extreme on the internet, the first thing you're gonna see are computer graphics display boards. And you're like, what? And no, it's like, put in Maximus Extreme tiny houses and then you'll get his stuff. And like I said, Stu is the most creative of all the tiny house builders I've seen. He's not afraid of anything. Anything that I throw at him like, hey, let's do this, you know, let's put a stripper pole up on the roof and have dancers and Playboy models drawn. You know, he's like, yeah. <clears throat> I'm just kidding, I never, I never said that. But uh, that'd actually be kind of a cool idea. Maybe I, should, maybe I should throw that out there. Anyway, the point is, he's willing to try all the kind of stuff that I want to do. Now, I'm not just coming up with some crazy outlandish ideas because I want to be some eccentric weirdo, I have practical reasons for my requests. For example, I have a motorcycle, so I kind of wanted to have like a garage section like you have in a sport utility uh, fifth wheel RV, right? And <laughs> no, nobody wants to do that. None of these traditional tiny house builders, that scares the heck out of all of them. They're like, no thanks, don't want to do that project. When I give that idea to Stu, he's like, yeah, let's do it. That'll be awesome. You know, so Stu is very cool because he's willing to, to do these kind of outlandish ideas and, and try new stuff instead of just sticking with the same stagnant designs over and over again. Well, see this right here? Th this is what I'm talking about. See, if you do a search on the Internet, Maximus Extreme, the first thing that comes up is motherboards. But you can see right below that, the second one, that is Stu's company, Maximus Extreme Living Solutions, and they're the folks who are building really creative and cool tiny houses. Here are some great examples of their houses. The one up there on the upper uh, left, that one is a steampunk house that was featured on Tiny House Nation. And then you got the caboose looking one in the lower left, or excuse me, lower right hand corner. And then on the upper right hand corner, that's one of the newest ones that he's been working on. Uh, here in the winter of 2016, and with that cool staircase on the outside. So as you can see, his designs are very different, very creative, and very unique. Zil Vardos. You know who he is? Ever heard of that company, Zil Vardos? Zil Vardos, among tiny houses, in my opinion, he probably has the most beautiful of all the houses. Now, I've actually never contacted Zil, um, so I've, I don't know if he's going to be really responsive, uh, but... Man, his craftsmanship is just incredible. Every one of his houses looks like something out of a fairy tale. I mean, they're, they're just, they're, like I said, aesthetically, aesthetically, aesthetically speaking, they're the most beautiful tiny houses that are out there. Here are some examples of the Zilvardos home made by Abel Zill. So, I mean, look at them. They're just amazing. Like I said, don't they, they look like something straight out of a fairy tale. They're so cool. They're so different and so creative. They're unlike anything else that anybody else is making out there. So as I said, aesthetically speaking, these are my favorites. They're just astounding. And right here we have some interiors of these Zill Vardos homes. Really beautiful. Even the interior lines are really different. You got those really cool circular windows and the nice arches and things like that all over the place. It's not just a bunch of straight lines. It's a very kind of organic feel and really, really dig what he's doing. So there you go. There is the update. Now you know why things are taking so long. <laughs> now you know 
what the whole process has been thus far. So like I say, two years since I came out here for the first time, still trudging along, still moving forward, and uh, I hope to have more video updates for you good folks. I got a very small audience as of right now. I've got, I think, 75 subscribers on the internet. Kind of paltry numbers, but nevertheless, I'm very thankful for those of you that do subscribe and that actually care about what it is that I'm attempting to do. So, thank you for watching, and remember, do not, do not follow your dreams. Catch them. I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream. But that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible.